So today I'll be doing a question from the 2010 AP Calculus test, and this is question number five. It says the function g is defined and differentiable on the closed interval negative 7 to 5 and satisfies g of 0 equals 5. The graph of y equals g prime of x is shown above, <coughs> the which is a derivative of g. Um, it consists of a semicircle and three line segments, as shown in the figure above. So part A asks us to find g of 3 and g of negative 2. So we know that to find g of 3, we're going to have to do 5 plus the integral of 0 to 3 of g prime of x because we know that the integral of a derivative gives us the original function, which is what we're trying to find. And we add 5 to that because it says g of 0 is equal to 5. So if we look at the graph that it gave us, we can see that we have a section from 0 to 2, as shown here, from 0 to 2, that is a quarter of a circle. And then we have a triangle with a base of 1 and a height of 3. So let's go ahead and put that into our function. So g of 3 will be equal to 5 plus. So we know that the integral is the area under the curve, so that's why we divided it into two um, geometric shapes. So if we look at the picture, we can see that the radius of the semicircle is 2. So pi times 2 squared over 4, since we only have a quarter of the circle, plus, and then we're going to add the area of the triangle, and we know that the base is 1 and the height is 3, so 1 times 3, and we're going to divide that by 2, because that's how we find the area of a triangle. So if we simplify this, we get g of 3 equals 5 plus 4 pi over 4 plus 3 over 2. So <clears throat> we can simplify that even more, and we get 5 plus 3 halves plus pi. And if we simplify this even more, our final answer will be g of 3 is equal to 13 halves plus pi. So now it asks us to find g of negative 2. And <clears throat> going from what we had above, we know that we're going to do 5 plus the integral of the function from 0 to negative 2 of g prime of x. And again, we add 5 because stated in the beginning of the problem, it says that g of 0 is equal to 5. So <clears throat> if we look at the graph of this function, we can see that from 0 to negative 2 is actually just a quarter of the circle. So that's the geometric shape that we're going to want to find the area of. But first, if we look at the integral function, we see that it's not quite right because it goes from 0 to negative 2. So to fix that, we will do, we'll take the negative of that. So we end up with 5 minus the integral of negative 2 to 0 of g prime of x. And we know that the area under this is going to be the same as this because it's only the other, it's the flip side of that um, shape, so it's just a quarter of the circle, and that's the same area. So we know that's going to be pi times 2 squared over 4. So we can simplify this. And our final answer is going to be 5 minus pi. And that's how you do part A of this problem. Okay, part B asks us to find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection of the graph of y equals g of x on the interval negative 7 and or negative 7 to 5, and we need to explain our reasoning. So we know that the point of inflection is going to be where the graph of the second derivative of the function intersects with the uh, x-axis, but we also know that the point of inflection is going to be where the graph of the first derivative um, will change from negative to positive slope. So if we just look at the graph, 
we can see that there's a couple places where this happens and <clears throat> the first one is going to be here where x equals 0 because it changes the slope changes from positive to negative so let's start by writing these down so x equals 0 and then if we look at the graph again we can see that at x equals 2 the slopes change so the slope is negative here and it shifts to positive so x equals 2 and again it shifts where x equals 3 because you can see the slope changing in changing directions so x equals 3 <clears throat> so the question asks us to find each point of inflection which we already did and we need to explain our reasoning so we can just go ahead and say that points of inflection and then we can so what we're going to say points of inflection are x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals 3 because the graph of g prime of x changes from increasing to a decreasing slope at <clears throat> x equals 0 and x equals 3 and g prime of x changes from a from a <laughs> decreasing slope to an increasing slope at x equals 2. And that's how you do part B. Okay, so now in part C, it says the function h is defined by h of x equals g of x minus 1 half x squared. Find the x coordinate of each critical point of h where negative 7 and 5 are the boundaries. <clears throat> and classify each critical point as the location of a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither a maximum nor a minimum. And then we need to explain our reasoning. So let's start by finding um, the derivative of h of x because we have everything else in terms of derivative. So we know that h prime of x will be equal to g prime of x time, or minus the derivative of 1 half x squared. So we know that the derivative of 1 half x squared is just going to be x. So we can say that h prime of x is equal to g prime of x minus x. And to find the critical numbers, that's when we would set um, this all equal to 0. <clears throat> so if we look at this, we can see that if we graph the line, oh, actually we need to do this. So we know that g prime of x minus x equals zero. So we can say that g prime of x equals x. And that will be when um, h prime of x equals zero according to this equation that we have here. And if we graph this, that's going to be the same as um, y equals x, or a line sloped like close to this. So if we graph this line that we found in solving for g prime of x, we can see that the critical numbers will be where um, the graph of g prime of x intersects with this line here. And we can see that those points are going to be here and here. So in order to find this point, the value of x at this point, we're going to have to find the equation of this line segment and set that equal to... Um, 
set that equal to g prime of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we look at <clears throat> if we look at the segment there, we can tell that it's a circle, and we know that the radius is two. So we know that the equation of that line is going to be square root of four minus x squared given by the radius and the general equation for a circle and the um, center of the circle. So we know that this is going to be equal to g prime of x because that is the graph of g prime of x and since g prime of x is equal to x we can set this all equal to x, x so and from here we need to solve for x to find the value at which g prime of x equals x intersects with this line. So that's how we're going to find this point right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So 4 minus x squared is going to be equal to x squared. And 4 is equal to 2x squared. Divide each side by 2 and we'll get 2 equals x squared. So square root of 2 is equal to x. And we know that it's usually when you take the square root we get plus or minus but we know that it's going to be the positive because if you look at the graph you can see that that is a, po a positive x value so x equals square root of 2 is one of our uh, critical numbers for h prime of x and then if we look at the graph we can easily tell that our no other critical number is going to be when x equals 3 because it intersects perfectly here with the graph of g of x, or g prime of x. So we can also write that down. So x also equals 3. So the rest of the problem asks us to find, <clears throat> to tell us, I guess, what the relative maximum, or if it's a relative maximum, relative minimum, or neither. And we need to explain our reasoning. So when we look at this graph, we can see where our points are, which are right here, that's the square root of 2, and this is 3. And if we make a little sign chart which is representing the values of h prime of x, and we put in our critical values, we can find <clears throat> where it's going to be increasing and decreasing, and that will show us what's our maximum min and minimum. So if we just look at this graph, we can simply see that at a value that is... Um, greater or less than square root of 2 is going to be positive by looking at the graph right there and at a value that is less than square root of 2 in between these two values we see that that's negative by just looking right here and any value bigger than 3 looking there is also going to be negative so that tells us that if we graph it out like that that this is going to be a maximum and 3 is going to be neither, so square root of 2 is a local max. And 3 is a maximum nor a minimum. And this is how you solve the 2010 AP Calculus question number five.